Shadiverses. Greetings, I am Shad, and recently I've made a video on female armour, really diving into the historical context of armour being made to emphasise physical appearance. And as we found out in that video, it absolutely was done historically, and as to why, how and where, well, please go watch that video. In this one, I want to focus specifically on the practicality of armour made to emphasise female appearance. Now, another thing that we kind of got to realise in that video is that the main difference that we would see in historical functional armour is the emphasis on the chest area, basically boob plate. Would this type of armour be detrimental to the armour's purpose and function, protecting the wearer? First of all, we need to make a distinction in what type of boob plate we're talking about like I mentioned in a previous video, I'll probably be referencing it you know, now and then because they're kind of interrelated, right? Historical armour was generally made with a bulge on the front, and this was made to help deflect incoming strikes. If a strike hit, it would kind of deflect and bounce off. And we mentioned in my previous video, one of the simplest ways to emphasise the female form is to raise that bulge over the chest area to emphasise a woman's bust. This would give the armour a more feminine appearance, and it needs to be pointed out this would have no detrimental effects at all, because the bulge is even over the whole area. There's no individual breast kind of shapes, yet it still emphasizes a feminine appearance. And that is absolutely practical, okay? No detrimental effects whatsoever. So that type, fine. But what about armor that actually has two breast shapes made into the breastplate itself? Which kind of uh, gives a, a more direct meaning for breastplate, doesn't it? There is such a pervasive idea that armour on this shape, with two specific breast shapes in the armour, would funnel any incoming strikes to the chest, transferring all the force directly on the breastplate and therefore into the sternum and kill the wearer. Or at the very least, transfer far more damage to the wearer, which is why you would never want to do it, and any idea of having this type of armour is ridiculous and stupid. Well, that's logical, doesn't it? So therefore it must be true. Uh, you see, even if we find a logical kind of process to reach a conclusion, that doesn't mean we have considered all the factors, and that's what I think this kind of criticism of boob plate falls into. It's not considering some very significant elements regarding hardened steel armour that actually doesn't make this idea, boob plate being horribly detrimental, 100% accurate. There are some other elements that, honestly, don't make it nearly as impractical as people are saying, to the point where, again, Again, like I said in my other video, if there are enough female warriors historically getting armour made specifically for them, eventually, very likely, that armour would be made to emphasise female physical appearance, and we would see the emergence of boob plate. We didn't see it historically, because barely any women fought historically, but if they did, it would happen. Alright, so what are these other elements that I've referred to that actually make boob plate far more practical and feasible, and also answers this supposed this potential problem of uh, strikes being made right to the sternum. The first thing that I think people who raise this objection aren't fully kind of acknowledging is the fact that the breastplate is still made out of hardened steel. Oh look, like any breastplate would have issues if it was made out of like tin plated dirt, okay, and it could be caved in or anything, regardless of boob plate or not, yet yeah, you're going to run into trouble. But if the armour is actually made out of proper hardened steel, okay, having breasts on the armour doesn't discount that fact, it's still hard and steel, which is very good at protecting the wearer. And on top of that, you do have a level of padding underneath, so having breasts on the armour doesn't suddenly make the armour completely ineffective. It is still very effective at its job. Is it as effective as it would have been? Maybe not, there might be a small little decrease, but is that decrease significant enough to say it would never be done? Not, not, not my opinion, in actual fact, for a couple other reasons that I'm going to point out now. One of the main things is that people rarely ever aimed for the flat plates of armour, okay? You think there aren't any other parts on the whole armour setup in which it doesn't funnel strikes into a focal point of force? I mean, have a look at the waist on most medieval armours where the breastplate meets the fold, okay? Do you see a kind of funneling in to a focal point, alright? According to the same logic that everyone is applying here, this should 
therefore funnel any strike that's made on the lower part of the stomach and upper part of the fold to funnel right into the waist and transfer all the waste into the gut, which would then kill people completely so armor would never be made this way, but guess what? It was! Logical consistency, people. Therefore, this is not nearly as detrimental a feature that would nullify the manufacture of this plate completely, and in actual fact, the cavity in between the boobs on boob plate would be stronger than the cavity between the joint of the breastplate and the fold, because oftentimes there wasn't armor in that actual gap, because oftentimes that focal point that the strike would get funneled into in the waist is made out of two armored bits or metal overlapping, and so there's a, there's a chance that this strike that could get funneled into that section could actually slip in underneath or in between around the plates and go right to the gut, whereas on boob plate it's still solid smooth plate with no gaps or overlapping metal at all, so boob plate would actually be more protective than the joint between the breastplate and the fold. Even if this design is slightly less effective than armor that has just an even dome, we have to remember there are cases where armor was made to emphasize certain physical appearances that would make it less effective. Well, the classic example is schlong armor, as everyone is kind of referring to. Like I mentioned in the previous video, armor was made to incorporate a cod piece in its design. And you know one of the main detrimental features of having this? Riding a horse. Do you think you could ride a horse effectively with this big honking metal thing being driven right into your crotch? Well, <laughs> first it would be painful, and second, it, would, it makes the armor less effective in the sense that you basically can't even ride on a horse. One of the, you know, fairly significant things that people did in medieval, medieval combat. Also, cod pieces were not the only bit of anatomy that was represented on armor historically. You know, if you go back far enough, you will see the uh, Greek muscle cuirass, where, you know, technically guy breasts, okay, I call it pecs, all right, pectorals, and six packs were made into the breastplate itself, again, to emphasize physical appearance. So once again, armor was made for physical appearance, and even if, the, say, the muscle cuirass was not as effective as one one that had a dome and stuff like that, it's still metal, okay? It'll still be able to protect the wearer much better than if they're wearing nothing, and perhaps they were willing to sacrifice even that little bit of functionality, which isn't a lot in my opinion, for aesthetics and appearance. So according to the criticism and logic applied, every single strike against armor would be aimed right between the join between the breast and the fold. But no, because guess what? It's hardened steel! Even if this is a slightly weaker point in the armor compared to other areas, guess what they did? They aimed for the areas that were completely open the open areas of armor. They didn't aim for the plate because they knew aiming for the plates of hardened steel was basically useless unless you're using something massive like a poleaxe, okay? And if you're using a poleaxe against someone in full plate, it doesn't really matter if you're going to hit it in between the breasts or in between the fold or anything like that. You hit them anywhere and there's a good chance you'll be able to transfer a lot of blunt force. So again, having a cavity between the breasts, not a detrimental thing. There are other cavity and weak points on the armor and there are other areas on armor that's actually far weaker and vulnerable than this cavity and that's where people aim for because they're not stupid they don't just think oh steel because there's a cavity I can now chop through hardened steel no it's still hardened steel the next point that counters this criticism of boob plate being completely ineffective is the fact that the cavity between the breasts doesn't need a rest flat on the chest, okay? It can still be raised up a bit, and in actual fact, that cavity can be domed in between the breasts to still get the deflection feature. So yes, this internal dome can still deflect strikes, and the only strikes you really need to worry about is, like I mentioned, the big ones from like a pole axe or a lance hit, and they're gonna, you know, threaten a person in armor wherever it lands, not just in the chest. So the chest chest, not a big problem. The other thing, okay, people think that a strike that, you know, hits a side of a breast kind of cup section of the plate and then gets transferred into the middle transfers all the force of that strike. No, <laughs> all right? That first deflection from the side of the breast absorbs a lot of the energy from that strike and it's gonna hit the sterner or the middle section of this armor with far less energy than it did before. In fact, the only type of strike that would have full energy is one aimed directly in the middle, which would still have the same, you know, transferal force if it was done with that armor that had an even dome on the front, okay? Because directly in the middle, it's not gonna be deflected either. Talking about if it's struck directly in the middle on a dome one, it's not gonna be deflected just like one with breast cups. So again, this attacking nature of this uh, type of design being completely impractical and useless and it's completely detrimental and dangerous, people aren't thinking this through properly. So in conclusion, when we really try and look at all the elements that come into what makes armor effective and being able to do its job and all, all that stuff, the conclusion is 
far more plausible and realistic than many people are saying. So there we go. This is if female boob plate armor can actually be functional, effective, if it's detrimental. And we know what the answer is. So thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't watched my previous video on the historical precedent, okay, on female boob plate armor, do go check it out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you there. So until then, farewell.